Just in the last hour or so, we've had news through that the Iranians have launched a rocket attack on a base in Iraq. We'll show you where that base is now. Uh, this, is, this is a rocket attack in retaliation for the US assassination of the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, General Hassam Soleimani. Uh, so this base is to the west of Baghdad. It's been a base, uh, the Al-Assad air base, that's been used for quite some time uh, for US troops. Uh, word is that there were tens of rockets fired on that base from Iran. You can see it's uh, yeah, a fair way over the border from Iran. Uh, no reports of casualties at this stage. Uh, we've been told the uh, US President Donald Trump is being briefed and uh, is also informing um, other senior politicians across the uh, political spectrum of what's going on. Uh, we've got our US correspondent David Lipson uh, joining us now. David, what can you tell us? Yeah, well, g'day, Joe. The latest is we have a statement now from the Pentagon that confirms at least a dozen missiles have been launched from inside Iran and have actually hit two, at least two, US bases inside Iraq. So I'll read you some of that statement at approximately 5.30 p.m. EST. That's Eastern Standard Time in the United States, so about uh, almost two hours ago. Uh, Iran launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles I'll come back to that point. Um, against US military and coalition forces in Iraq, it's clear that these missiles were launched from Iran and targeted at least two Iraqi military bases holding US military and coalition personnel. Al-Assad base is one of them and Erbil is the other one. Now, the reason that I mentioned ballistic missiles is that uh, that is uh, clearly uh, only uh, you know, within the capability of Iran itself, not just uh, its proxies. So this does seem to indicate uh, a clear escalation in uh, the, uh, the conflict that has been going tit for tat for several weeks now, much longer, depending on how you, uh, you look at it. Uh, but really, the response from the US is what we're watching very closely on now. And I think that will probably depend largely on the sorts of casualties that we will or won't see uh, inside these bases. So the bases uh, hold not only American soldiers, but coalition soldiers as well. So Iraqis, possibly some others, um, indeed from, uh, from you know, the, the United States allied countries. Uh, but there is a, a little bit further on that statement. Uh, it goes on to say, we're working on initial battle damage assessments. And uh, as we evaluate the situation and our response, we'll take all necessary measures to protect and defend US personnel, partners and allies in the region. So this is a response from Iran that the Pentagon was very much expecting, was, uh, was very much ready for, and uh, you know, so, so not unexpected, uh, but, uh, but certainly a, a clear escalation mm. in, uh, in this conflict. Okay, David, so just take us back a few steps. So we had this news come through several days ago about the assassination of this uh, general, this senior Iranian general. Take us through uh, what happened back then, and that, that was in Iraq, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, that's right. It was at Baghdad or just outside Baghdad airport, Qasem Soleimani, who is uh, or was the top military general in Iran, a very important and powerful figure, not just in Iran, but uh, right throughout the Middle East. He was responsible for coordinating many of Iran's proxies, uh, which uh, have uh, worked against the interests of the United States and Israel in particular, uh, as well as other uh, US allies. So uh, that strike against him uh, was in response to what we'd seen in the days and weeks prior to that, uh, an escalation in tensions. Uh, we saw a, a strike, a rocket strike by Iran, uh, or at least its proxies, uh, its uh, you know, Shiite militia proxies against the US embassy in Baghdad, and that resulted in the death of an American contractor. Uh, now, from uh, reporting that we have seen out of uh, the United States in recent days, that attack in particular, followed by uh, pretty violent protests at the US Embassy, really infuriated the President Donald Trump. He was watching very closely. He said to reporters on New Year's Eve that he 
was not going to allow another Benghazi, and that of course is in reference to the attack, the attack on the, the US Embassy back in 2012, uh, in which uh, the ambassador there, the US ambassador and three other officials were killed. Uh, it seems that from that point on, the president was very much on a course to deal a serious blow to Iran. It came as a big shock, uh, not only to Iran, but uh, to the Middle East and indeed the United States' allies as well. Everyone, it seems, has been scrambling to, uh, to sort of uh, deal with the repercussions of that strike. And we've seen those enormous protests, those outpourings of, of grief in Iran uh, and Iraq and elsewhere in the Middle East as to the death of such an important commander. Yeah. Uh, as a result of all of that, that's where this expectation was that Iran was going to retaliate. The Iran described the attack on Qasem Soleimani as an act of war. And as such, uh, we have been waiting to, uh, to see how they would respond. Well, we've seen at least the start of that response. We don't know if this will be the end of it. Uh, we also know that Iran has, uh, uh, has scrapped uh, its uh, adherence to the 2015 nuclear deal. So potentially they could be uh, now uh, working towards enriching uranium to, to make a nuclear bomb, which uh, experts expect or predict could be done in, in under six months, possibly as short as, as two months. So from here, it's very much unknown. It's uh, very precarious. Uh, and indeed, the president, we're told, as you mentioned, is watching very closely. We did have a statement from the president's uh, press secretary, Stephanie Grisham, who said, we are aware of the reports of attacks on US facilities in Iraq. The president has been briefed and is monitoring the situation closely and consulting with his national security team. And by the way, there was also a statement uh, that was released by uh, Iran's officials saying, we warn all allied countries of the US that if attacks are launched from bases in their countries on Iran, they will be the target of military retaliation. So as I understand it, if there are countries like Iraq, for example, that are hosting the United States, they have to give permission for the United States, States to retaliate from there. So that is a clear warning from Iran to those nations uh, that, uh, you know, not just Iraq, also Saudi Arabia and, and, uh, and no doubt Israel and others as well, uh, that if they get involved, if they allow the United States to retaliate, well, they could become targets too. And David, apart from those uh, recent skirmishes you mentioned between Iran and the US, what's Donald Trump's characterization overall of General Hassan Soleimani? Well, today he described him as a monster. And uh, he has, uh, over the last few days and weeks, um, or certainly the last few days, he has uh, pointed to him as, uh, as being someone who is not only uh, you know, was not only working against the United States, but was actively responsible for the deaths of tens or hundreds of Americans over the past few decades. So he has uh, certainly tried to paint uh, this man as a, as a monster, and not many people would, uh, would disagree with him in that assessment, that he has certainly been uh, responsible for the deaths of Americans. Uh, the question really is, why now? Why did the uh, President of the United States choose this moment uh, to actually strike out in such a dramatic way because the sort of work that, uh, that uh, Qasem Soleimani had been doing, uh, he'd been doing for a long time. Remember that George W. Bush and Barack Obama were both presented with opportunities to take him out and they didn't want to do it. They, they passed that opportunity up or those opportunities up because they feared the repercussions and the risks from taking such a dramatic course of action. Mm. Well, Donald Trump uh, is not uh, someone, it seems, who uh, uh, w was, um, well, I don't want to say he wasn't concerned about those risks. Clearly he was, but, uh, but clearly his, uh, his, his urgings, his, uh, his pressing need, uh, and po probably the advice he received to take action like that overrode such concerns. And David, you mentioned that uh, Iran has put out this statement saying if attacks are launched from the soil of other countries uh, by the US, those other countries can expect um, a retaliatory attacks by Iran. What, what's, what are the details that have emerged about 
the assassination of General Soleimani. Uh, was it, is it, has it been revealed that it was a drone that took off from an Iraqi airfield that fired the uh, missile that killed Soleimani and others? Or what, yeah, what details have become known about that operation? Look, the only details that I'm aware of is that uh, it certainly came from a drone. Mm. I, I believe it was from Iraq. I just can't uh, recall at this time. Mm. Uh, I don't know if that attack itself would uh, trigger that warning from Iran. Uh, that, uh, that warning has come since that attack. Uh, so, uh, you know, certainly Iraq would be concerned. It's worth pointing out too, uh, of course, the, the U.S. has a very strong presence in Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, what happened yesterday here in Washington is that the Deputy Defence Minister of Saudi Arabia came for a meeting in the Oval Office with Donald Trump. And uh, unusually, that meeting was not, uh, was not publicised by the White House press people. Uh, normally, you would get... Uh, uh, some detail or at least mention that the meeting was taking place. Occasionally you get a full readout, a background briefing, if you like, um, f on what was discussed. Well, there was no mention whatsoever. So the only way that we heard about it was when the Saudi Arabian uh, Deputy Defence Minister himself tweeted pictures of that meeting and uh, indeed said that he had come to Washington to convey a personal message from the Crown Prince of of, uh, of Saudi Arabia, and that uh, the uh, wanted to dis that they wanted to discuss the bilateral ties with the United States. Now, some took that as a somewhat pointed uh, uh, tweet uh, that perhaps uh, Saudi Arabia was nervous or, or looking to reposition itself in in terms of that bilateral relationship. Uh, but uh, not long after that tweet became public. And uh, the president uh, and the, his administration were criticised for being less transparent than Saudi Arabia. Uh, the president himself did tweet as well and confirmed that that meeting take place. I mention all of that just because so many of the United States allies have been uh, jittery or worse. Of course, we saw the Iraqi parliament uh, in the last few days vote to expel all US troops from Iraq. Now, that, uh, that vote was not binding. It's an interim government in Iraq. Uh, and uh, as such, it doesn't look like the United States is going to be leaving Iraq anytime soon. They certainly don't want to. In fact, they're sending additional troops into the region. So uh, there's a lot of confusion around everything that's happening. Uh, but certainly these uh, missiles, more than a dozen of them that have hit two military bases, uh, largely US run bases inside Iraq, have, uh, have moved, uh, have, have ratcheted up the, uh, the issue here. Okay, uh, now if viewers are just joining us, I might take this opportunity uh, just to go back through uh, this breaking news that's just come through in the last kind of 40 minutes or so. So <clears throat> in the last kind of several hours, Iran has launched a retaliatory attack after that assass assassination of uh, top Iranian general Hassan Soleimani. The attacks, it, it sounds like tens of missiles have been um, directed towards two facilities in Iraq. And we'll just show you where they are on the map now. Uh, so, and they're kind of deep, deep inside Iraq that these uh, missiles hit these facilities. So uh, they're, they're facilities where there are significant numbers of US troops. There's no word at this stage if there's been any uh, fat fat or injuries or fatalities. Uh, one was at this uh, air base, which is just to the uh, west of Baghdad dad the Al-Assad Air Base, and uh, another air base has been hit. We just heard this from our uh, US correspondent, Dave Lipson. Another um, uh, air base has been attacked there in the north of the country in Erbil. The White House has put out a statement saying the uh, president is across, is being briefed on what's happened. Of course, we've heard Donald Trump say uh, in the last 24 hours even uh, that there will be a severe response if Iran was to attack US facilities. There's no indication of any US moves at this stage. And uh, Iran has said uh, this, uh, it would take revenge for the killing of Soleimani. Um, and it has, 
yeah, so Iran has claimed responsibility of this and said that it, uh, countries that are uh, hosting US bases where there are attacks on Iranian um, people and um, assets from um, can expect to be attacked as well. We've got our correspondent David Lipson there in Washington. David, yeah, you just mentioned uh, the Iraqi reaction um, after this assassination on its soil. They, the, the Iraqis were infuriated about this, weren't they? Yeah, well, uh, they were. Uh, and uh, I mean, it, it, you've got to be a li little bit careful when we talk about the Iraqis because the uh, Iraq is, uh, is still very much a, a divided nation. Uh, and indeed, there are, uh, you know, a, a half of the, na well, I don't have the, the percentages, but a large portion of the nation that very much support the United States and it being there. And then a very large portion of the nation that does not support the United States. Uh, either way, uh, the action that the US took uh, was on their soil and they fear that once again uh, their soil will be used as a major battleground. Their civilians, their, uh, their people will be caught in the middle of another uh, awful and, and bloody battle um, potentially with Iran perhaps uh, involving the United States. No one really knows where this will go. But look, it's probably worth pointing out, Joe, that uh, even though this is a very serious uh, you know, escalation in the, the, the back and forward between the US and Iran, uh, we've got to keep things in perspective. Remember the United States strike actually took out uh, one, well, the top general of Iran. Uh, now, uh, you know, an equivalent response by Iran, if you look at this, uh, would have been to take out one of the United States' top military generals. Now, that uh, as far as we know, has not happened. It's very unlikely, even though there's a lot of fire and fury in these more than a dozen missiles being launched on American air bases. Uh, they're pretty big air bases, uh, from my understanding, and it's unlikely that there would be casualties. So this may fit into that threading of the needle that uh, we've heard a lot about in the last few days, that Iran has to undertake because they need to show a serious response, a serious retaliation. Uh, but at the same time, they uh, obviously are um, severely outgunned by the United States. And the US president has shown very clearly that he is uh, not going to take uh, any more American casualties lightly. Uh, as such, uh, they wouldn't want to poke the tiger in the form of the United States any more than it's been poked. Uh, so, you know, in, in a way, you know, we talked about the, uh, the ramping up or, or the opening up of uh, nuclear enrichment uh, happening as, uh, as one step in that, a show of defiance and, and force by Iran that they uh, were retaliating in that way. Here we have a, a, much more, uh, a much more obvious and dangerous display of force but, uh, but not one, as far as we know, that has uh, taken out a top US general. And as I say, that would be very unlikely from these strikes.